evening, good evening. Hello, everyone. This is your girl, Miss Classy, and welcome back to Speaker Vlog. What's on your mind? Episode 2, Part 2, Toxic People. Yesterday, I started talking about toxic people, how toxic I am, you are, we all are, and welcome all of us to being toxic by choice. One thing for sure and two things for certain. I wanted to add a very, very, very thank you to Monica Mo Justice. If you know you are toxic, how about you do some self-reflections and make the necessary corrections that need to be made? Thank you, girl. If what I just said hurts your feelings, <laughs> ask me, do I kill? I really don't. I want to iterate again any to any and everyone. You are more than welcome on my channel. Everyone issue is not Miss Class's issue. And everyone beef is not Miss Class's beef. I'm not going to get in your issues and your beef. So with that being said, everyone is welcome to my channel. That's it and that's all. If anyone got a problem with what I just said, really and truly, I don't care. If you are unable to comment in my chat when I'm live, or if you are unable to comment in my comment section when I do uploads or my um, speaker talk, then please, please. Email me at MissClassyKitbackLounge at gmail.com and let me know that you're unable to do that. If you're still unable to comment after you have emailed me, that means you are on some BS. I did not respond back to you, letting you know that I will unblock you because you are messy and I really don't want you on my channel. You, if you know you're messy, please don't take the time out to email me because I won't respond, okay? If what I just said again hurt your feelings, oh well, get over it. I will follow up. I want y'all to know that I will follow up. I am following. I'm sorry. I want y'all to know that I am following the same steps as the bigger channels when it comes to the new things that I'm trying. I like how they do things over there on their channel. When it comes to allowing their people to speak in their chat as well as comment in their comment sections. And when they block people over there, they have to email them to get unblocked. Okay, that is the same format that I am following on my channel when it comes to making those changes on my channel. I'm the purpose of me doing that because I want to keep a hostile free environment. For the people that comes and support me and for what I stand for on my channel when it comes to, you know, the people that's chatting as well as leaving comments. Now, let's get to it with part two of how toxic I am, how toxic you are, how toxic we all are. Welcome to being toxic by choice. Guess what, y'all? Class is now in session. All right. We live in the past. We have toxic people who will constantly bring the past up just to please people because they take things personal. They need validation to they, these are the types of people that, you know, they always trying to compare themselves to you. They always compare themselves to others. They always try to get people to, you know, participate in drama. They're always passing judgment. These are, you know, these toxic people who constantly play the victim. And what I mean by what I just said is, let me give you an example. Of, of what I mean by reliving the past and 
needing validation, participating in drama, passing judgment. I was in a big channel holder. You know, she's a big channel holder. I was in her live maybe about uh, a month ago. And she had over, she had anywhere between three and 400 people in her live one morning. And anybody that knows about, you know, this person on her live, she likes to play music. But this particular time she was playing music, she was actually out on a vacation. A bunch of YouTubers, they all came together and they had went on a vacation and she was playing, vaca- um, playing music. She was actually in a hotel playing music. Well, and she was talking smack with one of the other YouTubers that was in her channel. And they all knew each other because they had met up and they was talking, you know, smack back and forth between one another. Well, out of the blue, a YouTuber from this side of, you know, the Kajinka side had showed up in her live, very first time showing up in her live. And so the YouTuber came in and said hello to the channel holder. Channel holder really wasn't paying attention to the chat. She quickly glanced at the chat and was changing music, but she was talking to that individual. And glancing back to see that they respond back. But she really wasn't paying attention to anything else. Because everybody else in the chat was actually holding the conversation amongst each other. But then this YouTuber from on this side. Didn't know that constantly throughout the live. The channel holder will go back and say to everyone. Hello to everyone. And to new people coming in, thank you for coming. I thank you for showing me support. I glanced at the chat again. I had glanced at the chat and I seen where that YouTuber from this side had came in. And the YouTuber didn't realize, you know, that's what she does over there. And she'll always say, I apologize. You know, I don't really keep my eye on the chat. And she constantly say that periodically and normally she'll stay live for maybe like a couple of hours, maybe two, if not two and a half hours. And this has been a formality of her since I have been going in her chat for about maybe six months now. What this YouTuber did, right, was decided to get mad, come back on her channel and she's struck a live immediately on that channel holder and call her all kind of B. You be this, you be that. Do you know who I am? I'm this person. When I walk in your chat, you better recognize who I am. But this is the issue with this YouTuber. That's the same person that the moment somebody say something to him, they quit to cry victim. This is what many really don't see because the people playing the victim really and truly do not see what this person really be doing. Toxic at its finest. That's saying that I just said toxic at its finest. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. If the shoe don't fit, don't force it. Okay? Because some of y'all would try to force that shoe. And some of y'all will make what I just said apply. Some people should be careful when it comes to those type of toxic people who loves to play the victim because they are very bad liars at that. People playing the victim will also lie and defend at all costs. I'm not doing that. I didn't do that. I don't know why they bothered me. I've never do this. I'm just so sick and tired of it. And no one never really truly see the bigger scope of what they really truly doing. 
Toxic people reliving the past will always try and justify their misuse of terminology when it comes to certain words, their behavior. You know, it will all they are always, you know, um, um their display of they, they try to use their display of, of emotions to appeal to why they do what they do. They always trying to seek approval or attention. They are also called my favorite word, JJ's, which is jealousy and judgmental. They are jealous and judgmental of what you say, do, who you interact with, dress, if you are getting more attention than they are, becoming more successful than them, getting more money than them, having nicer things than them, is more popular than them, and so on. Remind me of a movie. When it comes to JJ's, it remind me of this movie, Death of a Teenager, right? Well, the young lady was not so popular and the other young lady who was rich was very popular because she was in a social group. And plus she a cheerleader and was very liked by everybody. So what happened was the, the young lady that was not so popular had finally got accepted into the same social group as the cheerleader who was very popular amongst everybody. So one night, you know, um, one day the, the not so popular female, we're going to call the not so popular female um, Bridget. And we're going to call the, the, the very popular female, we're going to call her um, Kelly, right? So Bridget had decided she was going to go ahead and try out for cheerleader. She didn't make the cheerleader team, but she was still part of the the social group that Kelly was a part of. So Bridget was trying everything that she possibly can, you know, to get Kelly to be her friend, her BFL. That's what she was trying to do, you know. Everything that Kelly was a part of, Bridget was trying to be a part of because she was trying to separate Kelly from everybody because she wanted Kelly all to herself. But Kelly wasn't paying Bridget no mind. So Bridget decided that she was going to put together this uh, make-believe pretense dinner or whatever type of party she was going to try to put together, this college prep dinner party and she invited the social group over but Kelly ended up showing up and I guess everybody else didn't show up and during the midst of when Kelly show up Bridget was making whatever overtures or whatever she was trying to make to Kelly but Kelly didn't buy into it actually Kelly really felt uncomfortable about it and Bridget realized that she wasn't getting the response that she was trying to get from Kelly and became very furious and mad that she could not get the response or the return response that she was looking for. And she took the knife and she killed Bridget threw a body in the woods. And one of the other females was being blamed for it because of the way she act, how she dressed. And due to the fact that her and Kelly had had a, a previous altercation um, before, but I guess due to the overwhelmness or whatever had happened or taken place, Bridget finally wrote a letter and confessed that she did kill Kelly and why she killed Kelly. And the reason I'm telling this story is because when it comes to jealousy and judgmental, you don't know the far length that jealousy and a jealous and a judgmental toxic person will go. I'm going to say that again. You do not know the length that a jealous and judgmental, toxic person would go, especially one that you do not know thoroughly on these social media sites. You see it all the time. People get in their personal feelings when you don't show up to something, you don't return their phone calls, you don't return emails, you don't return text messages. Yesterday, I had five dislikes on a video that was actually something positive. But because people get in their feelings, they come and dislike it. You didn't even have to dislike it. You could have just turned off from it. Today, when I upload this, I probably have the same. 
If I don't like something, I just don't watch it. Or I don't. I'll watch it through. I'll give them that view. But if I'm not sub to them, they won't get that. This is what I'm talking about. You know, these type of toxic people that you don't really realize who you are dealing with at the end of the day. So there are also though those same people, there are also the same people who God came to earth. <laughs> and I'm being real sarcastic, y'all. At the end of the day, I'm really being sarcastic. That's a, a ha-ha moment for me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was a really ha-ha moment. But those are the same people who God came to earth and personally told them when he was anointing them that they was going to be judge and juror. And I'm not being judgmental by saying that, but that was really a ha-ha moment. They quick to judge others, but they would never take accountability in what they do. And I mean, in any and everything they do, they would never take accountability in that. But they will always have an excuse for the things they do. Quick to show you what others do, but never take accountability for the things they do. For example, don't let me talk about how to put this. Y'all remember when Donald Trump just recently, he was he was at a golf tournament, right? Now, somebody will be real judgmental. If I was to get on live or went on live that day and talked about how he out there on the golf course, course walking around with that big old bubble stain, liquidy bubble stain, Showing in these, what is it, uh, a, a light white tannish pants that he had on where, <laughs> looking at it, he walked around, ain't no telling how long in that hot sun that somebody had to come up and probably tell him what was going on in the back of his pants and escort him off. And my thing is, did dude not know that he had a boo-boo liquidy stain in the back of his pants? Could he not smell it? I mean, could he not feel it? I know it was running down his leg or something. But if I got up there on live and cracked jokes about that, one of these toxic people would have been would have been so judgmental. That, that I would have been tried and convicted for me doing that instead of staying in their own lane. That's how it works when it comes to them. But it's okay if they would have did it. It just wouldn't have been okay if certain people on here do it. That's what I mean when it comes to judge and jury of these toxic people. So if what I said doesn't apply, let it fly. If the shoe fit, wear it. And again, I'm a shout out to my girl, Monica Mo Justice. If you know you are toxic, how about you do some self-reflection and make the necessary corrections? Okay. Toxic people reliving the past is also very manipulative. Yes, if you didn't know that, they are very manipulative. When things don't go their way, if you ever held a conversation that you don't want told 
with a very manipulative person, just don't never make a man. They will use that against you. They will hold it over your head. They will sit there and say, don't let me tell it. I got it all. Or I put it out there. Just keep on. They become very manipulative. They have they will they they will manipulate you to a point to where you are forced to try to stay in their good graces and find yourself doing things that is unethical that you probably not have found yourself ever doing before. That sometimes it may become dangerous for you or something you would not allow one of your loved ones to do. They also fall in the toxic category of a blackmailer as well. These type of toxic people usually have a criminal past. And normally their criminal past come in the form of domestic violence, forgery, robbery, burglary, you know, probably attempted murder. (laughs) And I'm just saying at the end of the day. Then there's those reliving their past who are holding on to years and decades of grudges. Some hold on to grudges for no reason. They don't even know how to let it go, nor do they know how to move on. They hold on to grudges if you don't want to be around. They hold on to grudges if you don't want to be around them no more, don't want to talk to them, don't want to respond to their texts, emails, phone calls. Tell them, you know, tell them they are wrong for something. They did, what is it, that they did something wrong. I mean, they just hold on to them grudges for their life. Life too short. They need to learn how to get over it and move on. These type of toxic people, wow, these type of toxic people, you know, I mean, they just hold on to it and never let go. Toxic, grudgeful, if that's even a word, (laughs) something that just pops to your mind will also become revengeful at the end of the day because they got to get you back. They owe you a payback. That's why I always always say, and you'll hear me say this all the time, how old are these people? Toxic people like this is more than likely was the ones that was in the third grade writing notes to you. Are you my friend? Flip the paper over, yes or no. Do you like me? Flip the paper over, yes or no. Will you play with me? Flip the paper over, yes or no. Are you mad at me? Flip the paper over, yes or no. As soon as you respond no or leave me alone, you're a weirdo. Or you don't even respond, here comes this toxic person holding the grudge or trying to get back at you or worse, I'm going to fight you. You know, something like that. Some sometimes something else, you know, that I, I notice when it comes to toxic people like that who relive their past is they are always blaming others for the bad things they do. It's always I did this for you because you did this to me, or because you failed to call me at this time, or you failed to come. To this place at this time or I thought we was going to meet up at this time or you promised to spend a vacation at this time or you know it's always something like that. They become very uh, narcissistic when it comes to controlling conversations as well or a person or situation. They got to be heard. They got to have that last word. No one else will be heard nor Will they have the last word when it comes to controlling a conversation or anything else? They must keep you up yelling at 
whatever it is, the point is they control it at least a good hundred hours. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. When it comes to their narcissist, narcissistic. A toxic person reliving, reliving their past will always bring everyone's drama to you from another channel, from another social media site, from another household, from another phone conversation, from another text message, from another email, from another phone recorder, from another state, from another country, from another past. Even if the drama does not pertain to them, they will bring it anyway. Even if person one, person two, or person three say something about them they don't like, all those three people did was gave them a scapegoat to bring the 99 million other people past and drama, present and future drama into their current drama. It's called shifting the real focus and attention from the real issue that was originally brought forth of why they were in the drama in the first place. These type of toxic people do not. uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it and say it again. They do not go away. They are really a deadly menace to society. And the best thing anybody can do is really ignore them. And let them slither away. Because when you allow them to slither away. They go into hiding. Because now everybody know how they are. And when they go into hiding. They hide for at least a good five, six, seven months. And then they'll slowly slither their way back out. Because then they think that you forgot. Then there is that toxic person who just can't close their pie hole, that fly trap, that hole in the face, that non-battery operated boca. They are always speaking out entirely too much. They must speak on everything. They speak so much that they are no longer bringing information or positivity, but being downright negative every time they speak. They have developed a narcissistic behavior of always having something to say. They can't shut up. They sit, wait, and lurk. The moment you say something, here they go. And they got to say something. They 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 so they they gotta have they also fall into they gotta have the last word. They gotta have the last word. All you can see is that big old hole in their face. And you hear the words that's coming out, and all you know is do they ever shut up? And that hole stays open for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And sometimes you have to ask yourself, do they ever lose their voice? And those type of toxic people are never telling you the truth. I want y'all to know that I took pride in being a Master Resilient Certified Trainer because it allowed me to do what I absolutely love to do. And that is teach and educate when it came to breaking the iceberg. Talking about toxic people and communication. It was even more effective when I would teach those classes Because we used to always do role play and scenarios. But with me doing this speaker blog talk 
radio blog talk. You can't do, you know, the um, role plays. So I'll stick with talking about the different types of toxic people. And hopefully some of you will really recognize just how toxic you really are and do some self-reflection and make the necessary corrections. Shout out to Monica Mo Justice because she the one put that out there. Then you will realize your communication has been just as effed up as the things you have been doing. This your girl, Miss Classy. Thank you for listening to Speaker Vlog, What's on Your Mind, Episode 2, Part 2, Toxic People. Please hit that like button and share this out. You never know who this may change. Have a blessed one, y'all.